The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the October 9th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Now send that early and send it off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our tiger stand, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a sea of red out there. All the U.S. indices that we do track are trading to the downside. Dow's off 95 points, about three-tenths percent. Half a percent for the S&P, about 20 points. Nine-tenths for the NASDAQ 100, 129 points. About a quarter percent for the Russell. That's down three points. Semis are off 56, one and six-tenths percent there. Gold's up $21.10, a little over 1%. Silver's up uh, a little over 1% as well. It's up 25 cents. Lights Recruit is up nearly 4.5%. Trading out of 86.50. Uh, you got natural gas up in nickel, 30 year treasury up about one point, trade out at 111.12. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside. Now, this is not going to surprise anybody out there. You've got the trio. You've got Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, and General Dynamics. It's wartime, folks. They're up 42, 27, and 16. That's 10%, 7, and 7.5%. Seven and uh, to the um, downside, you've got booking holdings. Yep, you figure travel would be um, affected. Uh, with a uh, with a war that's going on, so you got 77 uh, points. Al Nylum Pharmaceuticals down 15. ASML Holdings down 14. Nvidia is off 13. Monday's having a bad Monday. Dot com. It's off nine dollars and change. It's only a six percent move. But let's begin and analyze these markets. Let's first figure out where we're at with regard to market breadth for the S and P and the Nasdaq 100. We've been with the S and P 500 on a 30 minute basis. S and P 500 market breadth is bullish. What I mean by that, there's a 180, 190 instruments now with inside the uh, S&P 500 for their 30 minute time frame where prices trade above resistance, resistance being the top of a profile. Those would be bullish conditions, whereas there are 147 instruments trading below the bottom of a profile below support. That would be bearish. So right now we have a bullish market breadth. 30-minute ES mini or S&P 500. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100 out here, the NQ. What do we have for it? It's calculated it knows we've got 20 above and 47 below. So what do we have? We've got a chop, chop, fizz, fizz, just on a 30-minute basis. We've got a choppy market. Now, we can do better than that. We don't have to just give you the 30-minute set of market uh, TAS market breadth data. We can take a look at the 60, the 240, daily and weekly. We take a look at the S&P 500. We are bearish on the 60, bullish on the 240. Now, when I say bullish on the 240, I mean there's 182 instruments above, 164 below. This adds to the chop, chop, fizz, fizz uh, mark that we've got. We've got the NASDAQ 100, bearish on the 30, bearish on the 60, bullish on the 240. When I say bullish on the 240, I mean 44 above, 22 below. That's pretty bullish out there. The daily is pretty much a kind of break even, 30 above and 30 below. That's really a break even out here, uh, but it's teetering. 
So we've got uh, different market breadth out there. There's no consistency, and that says to expect these choppy markets. Expect these choppy markets while they try to figure out what in the heck is going on in the Middle East. Not that they don't know what's going on, but what's going to happen next. But let's not stop there. Let's just go uh, continue to use our technical tools and see what the markets are communicating to you and I. So now we know about market breadth out there. Let's go take a look at the daily time frame charts here, daily and weekly, quite frankly. Now we can dive down further into the uh, um, into the multi time frame set of charts out there. But to begin with, let's take a look at the. Uh, they've got four daily equity future contracts up top. Below them are their weekly counterparts. Now inside the ES Mini. We've got to buy the D point pattern. So that formed out here with this bullish piercing candle. That was on the trading session October 4th. So the ultimate level of support for it is that low, and that low being 42.3550. That's where price really needs to close below to suggest that there's real trouble in River City. Now, we've got a buy the D point pattern inside of the Yes Mini. This morning, or last night, I should say, as the equity markets opened, they traded all the way down to tested support. Why did price stop where it did at 4300.25? because that's where the buyers were lined up. We got down as far as a price point to 42.9950. So we know that that's an important level of support. We could also see that on Friday, price closed above that oscillator and change line. We're trading above it right now. I don't know where we'll be at day's end, but two consecutive days above the oscillator and change line, in this case here, would suggest to move to 43.70. Now, there's the interesting thing. And as each of you know, you know, for years, we've taken a look at the seasonal patterns. I used to do that manually. Now I use this cool tool from the folks over at SeasonX. We can take a look at all that data. And you all know that uh, it's in the mid-October time frame when we typically see bottoms. It can be any time in, the, in October. Um, the, the average time frame, I think, is around towards the end of the month out there. On average, we take a look at all the historical data. But here, we take a look at the ES Mini. Last week, what the ES Mini did was it generated a bullish hammer candle. That confirmed a Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis, right as price was approaching, but didn't get down to it, its breakout level of support, which is at 41.94. So what should transpire here is the weekly chart is suggesting we should see a move up to resistance. The first level of resistance for the weekly time frame chart for the ES Mini at the present time is 44.24. If price can get above that, then we're looking at about 44.74, although that, that 74 number will change as price continues, if, if price does continue to move higher. But in the ES Mini, for the daily and the weekly, as we come into the seasonal cycle time frame, you've got confirmed bottoms. On a weekly time frame chart for the NQ, we really don't have a confirmed bottom, but we have a swing point. That needs to be broken in order to trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. That's been tested for the last couple of weeks. That number is 14,792. Price right now is trading right at the bottom of its weekly profile. And the bottom of that weekly profile is down at the 15,057 level. We're trading right now at 14,988. If we look at the daily time frame, it's a TD9 count bottom. We've really already covered that. Uh, but again, we get, if we do get a second close above that oscillator and change line, inside the NQ, that number is up at the 14,910 level. We should see a move up to resistance. I'm trying not to sneeze, but <coughs> couldn't control that one. Okay, that would suggest that price would make its way up towards the 15,509 level. Dow equity future contract. Doesn't have a bottom just yet. Needs a bullish reversal candle, as does the uh, Russell 2000 out there. But the Russell 2000, on a weekly basis, will complete a TD9 count bottom this week. Very interesting. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to a couple of questions that have come in here. The first one coming in from Hector and a Patty. They want to take a look at two instruments, the XLE and the uh, GDX. So let's start with the XLE. The XLE, as we see it right now, does uh, today is confirming a buy the D point pattern. So you can see the A to B equals C. I'll draw it in here real quick. I'll draw in the A to B point out here. And then we'll go ahead. Oops, that was not the right uh, tool. Let's try the line tool out here. There we go. So now we'll draw the A to B. I'll just simply move that over to the C point out here, which would be way up there. So you can see this is more like a 1 to 2, 1 to 1.618, A to B equals CD. Now, what confirms an A to B equals CD pattern, as far as Stevie is concerned, is a bull, uh, a, B, a B equals CD to the downside would be a bullish reversal candle. A gap to the upside, which we have inside the XLE, takes care of that. Now, we've got a fairly wide profile out here. The bottom of that profile at 85.11, that's both the bottom and the center. So that should be strong support, Hector and Patty. Resistance out here is going to be the top of its profile or its oscillator and change line. That range is between 89.11 and 89.38 out there. So that's a daily time frame. Inside the weekly time frame, what the XLE is doing, it's got a TD9 count top. It's pretty much led to a consolidation with inside its profile. Support 83.09, resistance 90 buckaroonies. On a monthly basis, the XLE has got a TD9 count top. In order to take that out, it needs to see a close on a monthly basis of 93.91 out there. But price is above, well, it's straight, it's inside its bearish sell zone on a monthly time frame. That's between 85.94 and 94.71. So where is the XLE likely headed to? Much like the Marcus, much like everybody else out there, still trying to anticipate or understand um, you know, what's going to unfold in the uh, Middle East out there. Um, and uh, But right now, price hasn't broken out in any stretch of the imagination. You do have a, a buy point on the daily time frame. And just realize you're dealing with uh, resistance up at the 89.12, 89.38 level. So, Hector and Patty, I hope that that helped you out. Let's go take a look at the GDX. Again, we're taking a look this morning here. Most of the questions are really about those instruments that you would believe, based upon tensions, war, everything that's going on inside the Middle East, would typically make these instruments trade higher. But we're going to just simply go and understand from a technical standpoint what these instruments are doing. One of those would also be the GDX. Now, in the case of the GDX, much like gold, it already had a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. So that was already in place. 
And on Friday, price closed above the center of its profile and above its oscillator and change line. And that would have suggested to you and I that price is going to go test the top of that profile. Well, it's done that and more. It's actually gapped up above that. That top of that profile is 27.25. If price can close above that, certainly for two consecutive days, the message is price would go up to its next resistance area. Its next resistance area would be at 27.84. And that would be the bottom of its weekly profile. Now, because we have a gap up, but it's only Monday. But as we speak right now, I'll just answer as of 11.21, this would also have be a Gartley buy pattern inside of the GDX out there. But we really won't know until we, when I say we really won't know, we could know before Friday, but we, know, we will know for Friday for sure if in fact this pattern holds. What happens if it doesn't? Well, and when I say doesn't, means it trades back to at least, give me a moment here, trades back to 27.10. Make it 2709 would be even better. If it trades at 2709, that gap gets closed. That gap or that rising window would have been the uh, signal um, of the uh, bullish reversal candle. So we're really going to have to wait on that one out there. And on a monthly time frame, the GDX was into, uh, traded back to its bullish structured zone. That zone was because the bullish structured profile was between 2353, 2554. The low so far for the month came in at 25 and 62 cents versus 2554. So the GDX looking pretty good, but the GDX, in order to really understand the GDX, we really have to go take a look at gold, don't we? I think we do. So let's do that for Hector and Patty and everybody else that's out there. Let's look at you know, what we're going to do here. We're just, we'll wait just a few moments for I'm going to pull up all my intraday charts out here. So that's what we'll do with regard to Goldilocks. It'll take a moment here for this to populate. You'll start seeing them populate. In the meantime, had a great weekend up in Atlanta visiting um, with my uh, kids and Another family up there celebrating my youngest grandson's birthday. He turns one tomorrow. And we were greeted with some good news. He's going to be a big brother. Yep. So we got, uh, this will be grand, this will be a grandchild number eight. That'll be due next May out there. So that was actually a very cool weekend. In the meantime, all right, we've got these gold charts here populated. So with regard to gold, we really take a look at the daily time frame. And on a daily time frame, you've got this TD9 count bottom that is in place out here. What gold is doing as we speak right now, it's attempting to take out the top of its profile. That's where the sellers are located. That price point is up at 1862.80. Watch 1862.80, Hector and Patty, and anybody else who is in either the GDX or any of those instruments out there, because a close above that would suggest a further move higher. Now, in the case of gold, the next upside price target for the daily time frame would get us up to the 1952 level. 1952 is its TD9 count breakdown area out there. I don't have any other resistance on a daily time frame. And from a monthly or a weekly standpoint, its area of resistance would be up at 1925. So watch this. So uh, we so so you got 1925 before you get to 1952. Again, watch the area of 18, uh, 18, um, uh, 18. Um. Yeah, 1862.80. Now, what happens if price doesn't close above it? Well, then we don't have any kind of definitive confirmation that gold is really breaking out. We just have a TD Nike out bottom with price testing resistance, which is really what it's supposed to do. So keep your eye on that. Now, with regard to the intraday charts, I was hoping that we could identify something out here, uh, look for some type of topping signals or anything. The shortest time frame that I've got right now that you're looking at on the screen is a 30-minute time frame. So... Um, and I don't see any other tops that have us worried about anything. I see some resistance. The top of the 60-minute profile is an example is at 1869.50 out there. But watch the – today the most important thing is going to be that 1862.80 level. So I hope that helps you out, Hector and Patty, both with regard to the GDX and uh, – uh, and uh, Goldilocks out there. So let me close up these charts here, just simply to free up some resources out here. Let's go to our next question coming from Nancy. Nancy actually wants to take a short trade, short-term trade, be a, uh, I, don't, I don't mean short trade, a short-term trade inside of Apple. So let's get down and take a look at uh, Apple out here. And uh, first with regard to what is Apple doing on its daily, weekly, and monthly time frame, just to get a good feel. Let's start with the monthly. On the monthly basis, we don't have any kind of a top out here. We just have price consolidating with inside its profile, Nancy. 198.23 is resistance support at 147.01. On a weekly time frame, what do we have out here? We have price that formed a Rosemontum indicator top, pulled back to breakout support, 
Price is consolidating with inside its new profile. Let's say bullish structured profile. Price closed well above the center of that profile on Friday. You're still above it, the center being 174.33. Typically, Nancy, when you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, price wants to make a move for the top of that profile. That's at the 183.27 level. Now, that's a weekly time frame. You're looking for something more shorter. But just understand, we're not seeing anything significantly bearish on the monthly. The bullish, the weekly is actually bullish at this stage of the game. And if we take a look at the daily time frame, we unfortunately, with regard to Apple, we don't have any profiles. All the profiles are way above price up at 185.73. What can we say here? We can say that price above its oscillator and change line. Uh, you've got the inside day that's forming right here. Typically, when you have an inside day, it tells you that the current trend is going to continue. That trend looks like it's to the upside. We get back from this break. We're going to go take a look at a 30 minute chart, maybe a 10 minute chart for Nancy to see if there's any kind of topping signals. Oh, you know what? I see one in the 30 minute chart. We don't need to go to a 10 minute. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're looking at Apple. We're looking at the 30-minute time frame chart. This is for Nancy inside the Tiger's Den. She's looking for some kind of trade out here. What I can share with you about the 30-minute time frame, Nancy, is it formed a TD9 count top. 
It did that on uh, Friday as it uh, was coming into the close out there. Uh, price is now below its bullish structured uh, profile that is out here. The next downside target of support target would be 174.73. Your resistance would be up at 177.32. That's a 30 minute time frame. Let's take a look at a 10 minute chart out there. Just see if there's anything else that we can uh, find or identify for Nancy with regard to the 10 minute time frame chart here for Apple. Stevie's got nothing. I don't have anything to suggest this is going to move higher. It is trading below profiles. So I'll go with the 30 minute chart out there that has a signal that suggests that price gets back to the 174 73 level. So, Nancy, I hope that that helps you out. And thanks so much for your request. Next request coming in from Dude. Dude wants to take a look at a couple different instruments. The first one is XOM, ExxonMobil. What do we know about ExxonMobil? So, ExxonMobil out here gaps up. In fact, it's got a little bit of an island bottom out here as we speak right now. I don't have a buy pattern. It doesn't mean that it hasn't bottomed out there. It's just that I don't have a buy pattern. On Friday, price closed below that 108.42 level. That was a key area of support. That was its breakout level. We're back above that right now. That would indicate maybe it was a false break to the downside. If ExxonMobil continues to move higher, its next price target to the upside would be at the, what, the 114.70 issue area to 115.21. That's the bottom of its current profile. That was the latter number out there on a weekly basis you've got a td9 count top last week price pulled back and found support at the bottom of that profile at 106.67 as well getting back towards its breakout area at 104.57 so what do we have here i'd have to call it just a good old-fashioned consolidation when we look at that weekly time frame chart which extends itself from about 99 bucks up to about 119 so a pretty wide consolidation out there not generating any other important signals just yet on the monthly time frame. It's too early in the month to determine whether or not the current bear sash candle is going to hold up by the end of the month out here. But right now, what uh, we know about lights uh, Exxon Mobil, we did this with um, we did this last week. We took a look at the correlation between the direction of crude oil as well as Exxon Mobil, and we know that those two trade in the same direction. So, because your second request was for USO, let's leave that at. So we, we, we've analyzed Exxon Mobil for you, and now you've got to answer that question, what is Lightspeed Crude going to do? I know your request was for the USO, and I'll pull those charts up on our screen out here. But my question, not necessarily to Dude, but to everybody inside the Tiger's Den, if you're trading USO, what are you trading? See, a lot of people would think that it's the futures contract for Lightspeed Crude, and right now the active future contract is November. And if that's what you believe, you're dead wrong. The November futures contract for lights we crude is not even a part of the USO. But here's the USO right now. The USO doesn't have any kind of a bottoming pattern. Price gapping up. It's trading with inside its profile. What I can share with you is the support area because it's a bullish structured profile is between 74.27 and 75.19. With 77.98 being the resistance level. On a weekly basis, price is pulled back. It's testing support at 76.20 out there. That was its green oscillator and change line. So now let's really get back to Lightspeed Crew. Let's try to answer this. What's USO going to do? Well, to answer that question we need to know what its components are doing and we take a look at its components first let's pull up the crude oil charts and what stevie's going to do is we're going to change screens because this is the crude oil charts for november out here and if i analyze november which i'm happy to do it's just not going to provide the information that dude is looking for instead dude what we've got to do is we got to switch panels here so we're going to switch to my other screen and on my other screen you've got the components of USO, not the left-hand chart. I'm just leaving that November chart up there. But December, January. Now, by the way, December represents 60% of the USO holdings. And January of 2024 is 15%. So if you analyze at least those two, you've got 75%. But you've also got February, March, and June of 2024 that are each part of these contracts. So it's important to understand what those are doing. Are they doing anything different? Right now, with regard to the December contract and the January contract, what we don't know is whether there's an A to B equals CD to the downside that's going to get established. Why? We don't have any kind of bottom pattern. We do have price pulling back to test the support area. Those were the breakout levels in January of 2024. That number was 7808. For the December contract for Lights Recruit, it's 7851. Is price going to continue to move higher? So 
I don't know the answer to that question. Let's go back and take a look at the November intraday chart. Just see if there's any patterns there, um, as opposed to pulling up these. I mean, I can pull up December. Well, uh, nah, I don't want to do that on this set of charts here because then it would really just screw me up. We're not going to do that. But just for the heck of it, is there anything that we can see on these intraday charts? 30-minute chart out here. All I've got is a negated TD9 count bottom. That says lower price would be likely. On a 60-minute time frame basis, we've got price consolidating with inside its profile. So you want to watch 86.76. That's a resistance level. If price closes above it, that would suggest, at least on a short-term basis, 60-minute that is, uh, price would likely want to move higher. Support is going to be down at 85.32. So just consolidating between support and resistance. The other intraday charts are not assisting us uh, very much. So I know that you would like to know the answer. What is USO going to do? If we answer the question, what is is Lightsweed Crude going to do, we'd have that answer. And I don't have it just now. The reason I don't have it is I believe the market is still anticipating, trying to figure out what in the heck is going to unfold over, and we get to watch this live on TV, which is, you know, kind of a wild thing and on a, uh, in and of itself out there. So I think it's just right now, it's at a, it's at a, it's in a holding pace. I mean, you got, you got the uh, gold and silver up at resistance, natural gas up at resistance out there. Um, you've got support that's held inside the ES mini out here. You've got the spot volatility. It's trading just slightly lower as we speak. When I take a look at lights recruit, not a lot of clues out there, but the most important thing though, dude, is to realize that you're not, when, when I, at least when I do or anybody else is doing the November contract for lights recruit, you need to know what's going on with the contracts that represent USO and it sells other five. It's December of 2023. <laughs> And then in 2024, it's January, February, March, and June are the contracts that make up the USO. Let's get over to our next question out here. This one coming in from Greg M. And Greg's interested in a, a position inside AI. He had a position. He sold it. He's watched it pull back out here. We're going to go take a look at where it's trading momentarily as soon as I get over to that chart. I think it is right here. That is not it. That was ExxonMobil. Then maybe it is here. Nope. It's going to be the next one, door number two. If we take a look at door number two, we can take a look at AI. AI, what did this do? This formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It formed that on October 5th. It formed a TD9 count bottom, and that was uh, the low of August uh, of September 26th. So AI has got two bottom signals. So if you're looking for a place to get back in on a daily basis, you've got the bottoming patterns. Absolutely. You would close out that trade if price closed below the low of the pattern. That would be the buy the D point pattern, and that would be a close below 2337. If we look at a weekly time frame chart out here for you, Greg, you've got a TD9 count bottom that formed last week. You also have a new profile. Your support level there, price is trading below right now, is 2444. And resistance, 2872 and 32.99. Does AI have a buy signal? The answer there is yes, both a daily and a weekly. And you close it out if you close below last week's low. See Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the charts here for Lincoln National Corp. Ticker symbol there is LNC. This is for Alton. And Alton is interested in support and resistance levels out here. So first of all, Alton, today is likely going to confirm a wave number seven bottom. Now, you didn't ask me for it, but it's present. I've got to analyze the chart for you. And as long as we don't spike below Friday's low out there, Friday's low, by the way, is 22.50. You're going to get a wave seven bottom out here. What that should do, it should take price up to the first level of resistance. You were asking about support and resistance. The first level of resistance on the daily time frame will become a Sassoder and change line. That's currently printed at 23.62. You know, those last two digits are going to change up and down as price moves higher or lower. Price should target that level. If price get above that, then resistance, the oscillator and change line will become support. And the next level of resistance would be the bottom of its daily profile. That's at 2407. Above that, 2439. Above that, 2470. If we look at a weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart does not have any kind of bottoming pattern. But prices testing a potential support level, and that is the bottom of, or that is its oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 2251. On a monthly time frame, price is trading between support and resistance. Support is the bottom of its daily profile, which also happens to be the center. 2211 should be strong support. Resistance up at 2933. So LNC, it's got the potential of a bottoming signal with price on a weekly base after it formed a TD9 count top, testing potential support that if it holds, suggests that price should rally. So what it looks like to me is that price should rally up to that 2362-ish area, depending on what's happening as price is moving higher, then we could probably get a decent look. On a... Um, I don't know why I've got a 15-minute chart out here, but I do. Uh, what do I see out there? I don't see anything there, but let me just switch it over to a 30-minute time frame. The oscillator and change line is going to be incorrect. That's okay. So on the 30-minute time frame chart, we had a nice Roachmith indicator bottom, and the pullback pulled back the test at swing point. This on a 30-minute basis, and that's been a test and rejection. So what LNC is going to try to do, it's going to try to test resistance. Now, this is on a 30-minute time frame, and resistance is a zone between 23.16 and 23 and a quarter. Price closed above 23 and a quarter. We'll see price get back up to 23.44, and the question is, can price close above that? If it closes above, not 23.44, but 23.52, it will generate and trigger an A to B equals C to the upside, with the likely price target being 24.04. So on an intraday basis, you've got the potential for a further rally. The daily's got that wave number seven and suggests to move up to 2363. That 2363, that's the call that Stevie is going to stick with. 
So Alton, I help that help, hope that helps you out. And thanks so much for the request. The next request was to take a look at the TLT, which we're going to do. That's for ELO inside the Tiger's Den. But we're going to go take a look at the 30-year Treasury as well. Now, what we can see here about the TLT, and we'll see the same thing on the 30-year uh, Treasury, is that it could form a TD nine count bottom pattern today. But in order to do that, price must close below the close of bar number five. Well, the close of bar number five is 85.06. We're trading right now at about 85.89. So in other words, if price closes above the close of bar number five, again, that number is 85.06. If it closes above that, it negates the signal. And then I would have no bottoming pattern. TLT is trying to take on its oscillator and change line as well. That's currently at 86.15. The weekly chart for TLT says it needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a road's momentum indicator bottom. And that is the same thing on a monthly basis. So do we have a bottom here? Right now, the answer is no, because prices trade above the close of bar number five. The key question is, what is it doing at day's end? And if we take a look at the 30-year treasury, we'll put those screens up on our chart here momentarily. You'll see when we take a look at the daily time frame, the same pattern is out here. This is the more important pattern, perhaps, so than the one on TLT, because this is one that TLT gets its information from. So what the uh, five-hour bar Oh, man, I got to do the conversion on that. Give me one, two, three, four, five. Give me one second here, if you would. And I'll give you that number because I don't want to mathematically figure it out in my mind right now. So that's going to be a price close. What price needs to do today is close below 110.21. And right now we're at 111.17. If, if price close below 110.21, today then this will trigger a td9 count bottom now that pattern will complete tomorrow what you can see here if you were long the tlt this is not exactly what you want to see but the day is not over and when i say this is not exactly what you want to see you never want to see price get up to that red oscillator and change line and then turn down it hasn't really turned down just yet but right now that's the level that price is testing out there that's that oscillator and change line. if price close above it that would be short-term bullish and suggest a run um, for the 112 to 114 ish area out there. But today's close is going to be most important for those trading their TLT or TBT because of the potential for a TD9 count or the potential that it just simply doesn't form at all. So, ELO, I hope that that gave you the information that you were looking for. And thank you so much for taking the time to write in. Now, I'll check the uh, phone here real quickly. That means I'm going to check the email system, see if there's any other requests because I don't see anything as we speak just yet. And we've got about three minutes left in this segment out there. Um, the, 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 nope, I do not see any other requests out there. Ah, so let's go do this. Let's take a look at what's going on in the currency market out here. Excellent. Just popped up on my screen. So let's take a look at the euro. What do we know about the euro out here? Well, the one thing we know about the euro on a daily basis is the high that formed on March 10th seems to be capping any rallies to the upside. That high out there is 1.1121. Put that on your pad of paper if you were to trade the euro. That's your resistance level. Now, what else do we know about the euro out here? Well, price is traded above the uh, top of uh, above its oscillator and change line. That's at 109.8. Uh, so uh, in, the, in the case of the euro, things are still bullish, but we know it's, it's when I say bullish, it's got a wave seven bottom. So it's got a completed bottom pattern above the oscillator and change line. What it um, what else do we know? If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, it's got that road's momentum indicator top. It's trading just a tad lower versus Friday's close. That is putting some weakness inside the U.S. dollar index. There's strength inside the uh, U.S. dollar index from the euro's perspective as it's pulled back a bit today. But it hasn't taken out Friday's low or anything, so uh, we just have a retracement as we speak right now. In the case of the Great British Pound, uh, it uh, does not have, well, I'll take that back, it has a buy the D point pattern. It was that key reversal bar that formed that, that key reversal bar came in on October 4th. What price should do, it should target 1.250. Again, much like the uh, pound, much like the uh, euro, you haven't taken out uh, Friday's low out here. Uh, the uh, yen, uh, the yen, the pound is looking to me like it wants to trade higher out here. If it trades higher, the U.S. dollar index will continue to get weaker out there. So that's what I see when we take a look at at least the daily time frame charts. Let's take a quick peek here. Well, we've got just a few minutes at the 30-minute charts. We're going to change screens here, see if there's any kind of signals. So if you give me a moment, we'll get over to that screen, and then Stevie's eyes will look. What do we see out here? We see we see that price is trading above resistance at 1.05. Uh, so watch that level. If that holds, that's on the euro. 
The Japanese yen has been moving lower. I don't see any kind of a bottom signal. What I do see is price pulled back to its breakout level of support. That was at 148.55. That's the level that price needs to close below below to suggest that the euro or the yet the euro the yen on its daily time frame wants to continue to move lower which would mean it would get stronger US dollar index would get weaker so please watch 148.55 and the case of the great british pound to close above 1.222 will signal its intent to continue to strengthen against the US dollar index steve Rhodes with tfnm we get back to this break we're going to take a look at natural gas for ron r inside the tiger's den we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, mixed bag out here. The trannies are up 11. The uh, New York Stock Exchange up 6. The other indices still in the red. Dow's up 17. S&P's down 7. NASDAQ is down 72. Russell is basically unchanged. We're taking a look at natural gas here for Ron R. inside the Tiger's Den. His question is on the daily chart. What's the likely behavior of natural gas futures in the vicinity of its upper volume profile line? Ron, uh, 
the TD nine count breakdown level, it's not a profile line. That is where price broke down recently. That's uh, that's courtesy of the TD nine count pattern out there, and that's really important because what's the what's what's the likely behavior? Well, right now we can see that price is turned down. That's a real resistance point. That's a real key resistance point. So what you need to see for long natural gas is you need to see a close above three dollars and forty three cents out there. The profile line was at 3.07. That's the top of the daily profile. But what I can share with you is natural gas at resistance on the daily time frame, TD9 count breakdown level, $3.43. On a weekly basis, it's the top of its bearish structured profile, $3.341 and out there. If we take a look at the monthly chart, price is up at resistance. That's the center of its profile, 3.398. So the monthly, weekly, and daily are sitting at resistance levels. All you have to do is pay attention to five-hour chart. Why is that? Because it's got the TD9 count top out here. Price is pulled back. It's with inside its profile. If price closes below $3.28 out there, the natural gas is likely to head lower. And it could head all the way back to $2.96. That's the five-hour chart's TD9 count breakout level. So how significant is it? It's significant when it can't take out resistance. And on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily, that's where price ran up to. Hope that helps you out. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll see you on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magnificent Monday. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care.